the virus. You don't want it. Keep it. Maybe keep it? Five sixteenths. Two pop rivets. They've got to be cut out. table off. All right, there's two screws inside of here, both 5 sixteenths that tie the case to the backing plate. You'll have to use a socket. Restoration of a classic Ford is a journey of discovery. Let Autocrafters help you with yours. We offer quality parts for Falcon, Fairlane, F-Series, Galaxy, Maverick, and Pinto. Contact us today. All right, now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you briefly how to remove the backing plate. You're going to have to flip up most of these rollovers, and the problem with it is, is you can actually mess up the front case. I showed you already how to take these two rivets out, and that's basically what you'd have to do anywhere you're taking rivets off of these. I am wearing a mask because there's some uh, rodent debris. <laughs> cocoa, as a friend of mine used to call it. Don't eat the rodent cocoa. Um, there's, so there's rodent stuff in here, and hint the virus is a real issue at times. I don't know if that would be a case here, but I don't want to take any chances, so I'm wearing a mask. Uh, and then I'm going to take this one out and then just kind of go through the case and do the rest of it. But I'm going to show you what I do for this. Now I'm going to do obviously an inappropriate use of a tool here. I'm going to have to take my screwdriver, lay it up underneath here between the fiberglass case and the metal backing. What I'm trying to do is to get an edge lift on the case without messing up my fiberglass. At least not too much anyway. Okay, now I got the pop up. I use a small locking plier opened up a little bit. Throw it on that edge and gently peel that edge up so that I can relieve it from the case. Looking good. I had wondered if this rivet that's right here was one that was going to cause us problems, but it looks like it's just part of the case, possibly holding the inside piece in there. These are much more complex than a Mustang one. The Mustang boxes are very, very lightweight, easy compared to what I've got going on here. Never dealt with one with a metal box, so this is kind of an exciting and interesting thing for me. I will say it's exciting. But it's also a little nerve-wracking because I only have one shot at this. Because I can't see the end of the plastic on this one, I'm going to go out and push on this from out here a little further. I've only got one more I want to take off this top side. That's this one here. I'm trying to do as little of this kind of stuff as I have to just to make it easier on me trying to put the case back together.
Got to be very careful on this one. Just sits right there on that case. That may be just enough. I'll roll it up. Set it on its back again. I'm trying to keep from having to pry all of these across the bottom out. The ones on the top are a lot easier to hide up inside the dash panel of the car. The ones on the bottom are a little easier to see from inside the car. So you want to try to save these and keep these from having to be bent too much. Plus this one, this metal is looking pretty sketchy right here to me. Uh, there is some rust buildup, but I don't know how good that sheet steel is right there. It's pretty knifey, really thin. So I'm a little concerned about this spot right here being a problem if I go in and start mucking with it. It is moving, it's just not moving well. You know, see it's been in that upper corner. I am gonna have to muck with these bottom ones a little bit. On this one, I'm mostly just trying to pull it out so it will hopefully be able to be driven off the bottom. Same thing with this one. All right, I'm just gonna go across the top, the bottom of it and do this. I don't want to, but it looks like I'm gonna have to. Some of these are just not wanting to let go. Some of them I've already let go. There's a couple of them. I just want to hang on. Just released. That one was holding the entire <laughs> process up. Okay, I'm gonna take this and hopefully I'm be able to pull everything out, but I don't know. There's a flapper valve down inside of here that, that rolls this way from the base of this plate all the way up and it's not, not letting go. Here, maybe just let go. No, we'll roll it over. Okay, there's nowhere for it to sit. Boy, there's a lot of mousy stuff in here. There we go. It just popped. One of these is just hang on for dear life. Ooh, don't want to touch that too much. See how limber that is? That means that metal is super thin there. Pull this one out too, it looks like. Oh man, that is really limber. And not in a good way. And I'm gonna take this and set it aside for the moment. Take real good care. You can see how thin the metal is on this side. Uh, my biggest concern is trying to get this thing separated so that I can uh, take the rod out and clean everything up really nicely. All right, I'm gonna do some spray out here. Just trying to clean some of the junk out of this case. Okay, we'll do a little bit of water cleaning on the outside of it. And I'll take it in in a minute and show you why. I'm doing what I'm doing to, with this. I'm 
let that sit out in the sun. And once it dries, take it in the shop and show you what I'm talking about with things you may not know. I'm going to talk to you about a really important thing on this plate here. Now you'll notice that we have this still on here. This flapper valve is still in position. And I was wondering, how do I get it out of there? Well, it turns out what you do is you flip it this way, work it this way, and then work it that way, and then you take it out. Who knew? The other ones, not quite so simple, and we'll talk about that in just a second. All right, so case is cleaned up preliminarily. I'm not quite done with it. I got a few more cleaning details I want to do to this thing, uh, but I want to go over a few things with the case. One of the first things I wanted to talk about is the actual color of this case. You'll see these cars a lot of times redone, and the case color is usually black because guys just go in and they just spray paint the thing black and they're done with it. It wasn't black from the factory. I'm going to pull up my spray bottle here. Let's get a little bit of soapy spray on it just for right now. That right there is pretty close to what the brand new color of this case was from day one. It was more of a gray color. Now you go, how do I get that color? You can go in and spray the case if you wish. But what I think happened was, is it wasn't necessarily just gray. You could see the fibers in the case facing probably when it was brand new. And so what I will probably do with this one is, is I will go in and get some uh, probably semi-gloss clear. Uh, Rust-Oleum semi-gloss clear works great for this kind of thing. And just re-clear the case. Next thing I want to talk about is some of the cool things that were done to this case. And I think they happened at the factory. I'm going to flip it over on its top. And you can see right here, there is a crack. There's a pop rivet right there. Now that pop rivet, all right, that pop rivet, along with one on the top, holds this plate in place. So when they started pop riveting these things together, damage started to occur. You got to remember, this is an assembly line. They're not that worried about pretty and being correct and all that. They're just worried about getting these things down the assembly line. Um, there's another place right here where this perimeter shell piece for the blower motor, this piece is cracked away as well. So I think some of this damage, I feel pretty sure, probably happened at the factory. I'm going to leave them there. These marks are factory marks. They were here on this case when it was done. So I'm not going to mess with them. I'm just going to leave them right where they're at. But we've got, like I said, we've got some issues that were factory induced, I think. Now what am I going to do about the door here and that bracket there, which is what keeps the blend closed for heat and cool inside the car uh, for just air cooling? I don't know how easily that'll come out. I think that there is a hole in the case right here for it. But if I do that, I've got to take a pop rivet out here that I will have to reapply. And then I'll have to take pop rivets out inside. There's one here and one here. And I'm going to flip this thing over. And there's one here and one here. So I'm probably not going to do that just simply because of the amount of work that that's going to create in redoing this case. The next to the last thing I'm going to talk about in order of those things is the stuff down on this end of the case here. All right, so on this end, we have a door for the floor heat to be able to direct the floor heat more broadly or specifically at the gas pedal, which is what this hole would be here for. And then you also have this flapper valve, which controls that. You would use this with the controls on the dash and it would take this and I'll show you from here. It would take this and this door would close off so this would be just strictly for defrost and then you could blend it open so it's not just defrost. Then you can also go in and have that open and then you could close it all the way off. You just do all kind of crazy stuff. It's, it's nutty what you can do with these things. So I'm going to set this down for right now and move on to the next thing. All right, so with all the other things going on with this, I do not want to take this case apart. You can take it apart, but you have to go back in and put the blind rivets back in or the the flat rivets are not actually blind rivets. They're flat rivets. You have to put them all back in and you run the risk of damaging the case even more than it's already damaged. So I'm just going to leave it alone. 
No one will see the goings on inside of this thing, so I'm not gonna really spend a lot of time on that. But what I wanted to do is to prevent the rust. And the best way to do that is with a product like this KBS Rust Blast. Uh, things like this are a really good idea. I'll put them in a spray bottle like this one with a really good sprayer end on it, and I'll just shoot that stuff in there following the directions. It's usually about 30 minutes to an hour for this stuff to dry out, and it goes to what they call a phosphate coating. It does dry very hard into a surface that you can probably paint on, but what we're more worried about is maybe being able to apply the uh, foam stuff to it next week when we're gonna be doing that. I'm gonna show you another process that you can use using another product here in just a minute, but that's probably the best way to do this on a Galaxy heater box case, just simply because I don't wanna take everything apart. All right, so <laughs> in a case of this is what happens when you believe what you read on the internet, I went out to get a 40 inch long clear plastic box to put my metal plate for the uh, heater box in and my inside flapper door. And guess what? It's, uh, it's not the right size. Um, it's, all they had was 35, I need a 40. This is about 39 inches long. A 40 inch case would probably do it, but they're measuring at the top for 35, I believe rather than at the bottom, which is probably more like uh, 32, maybe 33, somewhere in there. All right, so what am I gonna do with this? Well, I went to uh, Harbor Freight and I bought some Evapo Rust. Now this is a pretty good product for uh, removing rust. Just let it sit and do its job. The only thing is, is I don't know if I've got enough at a gallon to even cover half of this like I want to. So I may be going around and doing more work to it down the road. The cool thing is, is this stuff is totally biodegradable. Um, I wouldn't drink it, <laughs> but it is really good for doing what we're about to do here. And what we don't use up here, uh, we will be able to go and just put right back into the container. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pour this whole thing of evapor rust into the box. And hopefully it will cover most everything. I am going to try a little trick using a couple of two by fours to get it more down at this other end. But yeah, I probably should have gotten another gallon. So now you know, if you're running a box that's too small, <laughs> you need to get two gallons of evapo rust. Um, I'm going to pick up this end, see if that'll make any difference. And it will cover up all the way down to there. I'm gonna move this to the bottom. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna probably do that right there. And I'm gonna let this stuff sit for roughly 12 to 14 hours and it should give me what I'm looking for. This kind of thing right here, I'm not gonna be able to do much with, but you have to remember, we're not gonna see most of this. Most of this is gonna be up against the firewall pad and you're never gonna see it. The only thing you're really gonna see is the end tabs and things like that if you're really looking. And by Gumby, if you're looking that hard, you must be a car show judge and this thing probably, <clears throat> this car at least that we're putting it in, probably shouldn't be getting judged like that. All right, so I got my blower motor here on the table while I'm waiting for all this other stuff to settle out. I got a battery that's a good 12 volt battery to check the blower motor. It's the only thing on that you really can check inside of this. You can check the resistor and make sure it works, but I like doing that when I can check it with the main switch and everything, run power to it on the switch for the control head so that you can check the entire system out at that point. Easy enough to do if you're taking the entire dash panel out, a little more complicated if you're not because you then have to wire this to the resistor to a switch. And that can be a pain in the butt because you have to get back up inside the car and hold everything together. You need about four people to do it. Just kidding, you can do it with one other person. All right, so we've got this set up. I am now wired. My ground wire is to my dark green, which is going over here to the negative side of the battery. And my orange wire, which is my power lead, is going to this red wire that I've got right here. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab that motor and hold onto it by the case, and I'm gonna set it off. Were this a 90 degree day, that would actually feel pretty darn good. Um, that is a nice, quiet operating motor. Now one of the things that's happened to it before when we were testing it in the case is there was a bunch of stuff inside of the squirrel cage like I talked about just a minute ago, but there was also things inside the perimeter of the cage as well. Things were running into these fins, 
causing it to have a problem with it not wanting to run right. Another thing that can happen is something can actually get jammed in here and it locks the motor up and it'll kill the motor. Luckily for us on this particular car, this is fine. Am I going to do anything to this? No, other than possibly painting the squirrel cage with some black Rust-Oleum. I'm not even going to probably do that to be honest with you. I will go in with some of the Evapo Rust on the back side of this and clean this up a little bit, but I'm going to be honest with you folks. This is going to go up against a uh, firewall pad and inside of that dome on the outside of the uh, engine bay. You will never see any of this. All right, folks, go out and check out the Patreon account. At the $10 a month level, you get monthly meetings with me on Zoom. It's a lot of fun. Uh, sometimes the room is pretty spartan. There's not a lot of people there. So if you have tech questions, it's a good time for you to use that $10 a month to go in there and get those tech questions answered. But more importantly, if we've done anything for you with all the videos we've produced over the years, if we've saved you money, wouldn't it be a nice idea to go in and put a little bit of money toward us uh, to help pay for some of the things that go on around here, namely uh, Andrew and Darren coming in here and editing for me so that I can do a lot of other things. Like today I had to go buy parts. Darren was continuing to edit videos while I was gone. It's a great thing for us to have that so that we can kind of go and do some of the other things during the week that need to be done. Plus, if we start producing another video a week, it'll be really nice to have those two guys around doing some of that stuff. They're alternating, they're not actually you know, both working at the same time because I can't afford them yet. Working on it. But that's where we're headed. Also, folks, you know where I'm headed now, and that's it to Super Thanks. Blakeney Sanders gave us 10 bucks. He said he would have given us 25 cents, but apparently YouTube doesn't have that option on the Super Thanks. So, I guess that's the smallest amount. It may be less than that. Maybe Blakeney just decided that he wanted to give us 10 bucks and he wanted to bust my chops and tell me he wanted to give me 25 cents. I don't know. There you go. That's our guy for this week on the Super Thanks. Thank you for doing that. Um, also, do me a favor, folks. Be kind to each other, love on each other, treat each other nice. You guys have a great week, and we'll see you on down the road. <laughs> that thing's got some kick. I bet it's jacking up the mic right now. You probably can't hardly hear me. It sure feels good, though. Nice and cool. Kind of reminds me of my grandma's place back when I was a kid. Sitting in front of the door, got a stitch of air conditioning in that house, and the only cool air coming in was off of a fan. Not like that, it kind of sounded like that.